Well, hello friends. Welcome back to another awesome video on Oracle P6 scheduling software. So wanted to dig into a little more detail um, and we're going to talk about some predecessors, successors, activity type, how to change a few things, but we're going to look way back at the beginning, like in a word format, um, if you will, and then putting it in a hand schedule and then eventually P6. But just wanted to clarify a few things and uh, just come at you live. Of course, we're going to have some help today. I got my little friend uh, Dexter with me, and Dexter is sometimes looks for attention, but it, Dexter, it's not time. Okay. Um, so he'll be back here in just a little bit, but first, check this out. All right, so what I want to do is we're going to start um, with the word. We're going to end up here on this schedule. Uh, but first, we're going to switch over to this little text right here just to kind of walk through this just for a second. So right, right at the very top, you see, once you receive the uh, 10, notice to proceed, um, comma, 20, order and deliver a brick. So it comes on time and begin the 30 excavation. Okay, so once you receive the notice to proceed, you can then order and deliver a brick. So it comes on time to begin the 30 excavation. So if we switch over here, we see the notice to proceed is here. Uh, then it goes to excavation and order and deliver brick. So that's kind of what it's looking at here. So it comes to uh, begin the excavation uh, and order and deliver brick is next. Act after excavation, well, let me back up. Um, it says the footing and foundation will follow the excavation. The footing and foundation will follow the excavation. And then uh, the excavation and proceed the 50 slab on grade. So here's slab on grade. Now, in my text, it's saying a number. And all that is is identifying each activity with a particular number. So when you see that number in, be in the front like that, that's basically what it's talking about. Um, and then uh, after backfill is complete, you can do the uh, form and pour the driveway. So after backfill, form and pour driveway. Okay, so let's get to where it kind of gets a little, little bit uh, confusing. Um, order and deliver goes to masonry um, because it says that uh, the crew will bring the shame. Uh, let's see. Your framing crew will begin to frame and shingle the roof after they finish framing the exterior walls. The masonry can begin after the roof and backfill is complete. So masonry can begin after the roof. Where am I? Frame and shingle roof. After the roof and backfill is complete. Masonry can begin. Order and deliver, we've already established, goes to masonry. So now we've got three activities going to masonry. But now what we want to look at is this last sentence right here. The exterior trim can begin seven days after the masonry begins. So that, my friends, is a start-to-start -start relationship. All these other ones are uh, finish-to-start, finish-to-start, finish-to-start. This one is a start-to-start. -start. Just remember, when you're looking at one of these nodes right here, the front of it is the start. The back of it is the finish. Okay, so finish-to-start. So this one is start-to-start. -start. So we're going to use a dash line to show that. And it says that it's a seven days. So it can begin seven days after masonry begins. So masonry begins. They're, they're working for about seven days. And once the masonry has gotten so far, then the exterior trim can begin. So we come out of here and go up to there. Then the last thing is punch. And it looks like there's quite a few. There's four activities that go to the punch list. But So pretty much it's just kind of following that as we go. Um, and, uh, and so what I want to do is show this now in P6 and see where maybe we can use this hand schedule to help us draw the P6. And so uh, thanks again for the wonderful support of Dexter. Um, you have come in so handy today, sir. Thank you. All right. So let's switch over here to the schedule. I'm going to pull that up here now. And <clears throat> what I've done is I've went ahead and, and done some of the work here for us and building relationships, but I want to show you how this is not a complete schedule. 
So the first thing I want to look at is the notice to proceed. Uh, right now it shows it's a regular activity. If I come down here to general under activity type, it says task dependent, which is what all these are. It's got a duration of five days, which is default. So that's no big deal, right? But don't change any of this stuff. Leave it as is. Um, we'll notice if we go back to this, it says after notice to proceed, we can start the, uh, we can order and deliver the brick and the excavation. So what I want to do before I turn this into a milestone, I'm actually going to build that relationship. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to pull down here to order and deliver brick. And I'm going to come over here to notice to proceed and to excavation. Now, if I go down here, let's just click on excavation for a minute. And if I click on uh, predecessor, you'll notice the predecessor, which means pre, uh, something that comes before, is notice to proceed. If I click on order and deliver brick, the predecessor is notice to proceed. So both of those are good. If I click on notice to proceed, I have no predecessors because nothing comes before it. But if I click successors, which means it comes after, like succeed comes after, um, then I've got two activities here. They're both a finish to start and they both have no lag. So these are important things to notice as we go forward. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the general tab down here on this on the screen. And um, I'm gonna make sure I got highlighted notice to proceed. I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna click on, I'm gonna say start milestone. And when I do start milestone, it changes it to this little black diamond and it puts a zero at the original duration. So I don't have to change any of that, uh, which is great, right? Um, okay, so that's done and those relationships are built. Um, but if I look up here at the top, it says 44. Now my schedule earlier, if I flip back to it here just for a second, it says 41 at the end. So I did all the math, all the calculations, and I've got to 41. So I feel like there may be something wrong. So let's look at this. Um, I want to look at the trouble areas first. I'm going to click on uh, masonry because masonry, um, and I'm going to come over here to pre predecessors, masonry, according to my drawing, and if I look back at this, masonry has backfill coming into it, order and deliver brick coming into it, and frame and shingle roof. So let's look back at this now. Okay, I clicked on masonry, predecessors, I have order, deliver brick, frame and shingle roof. Oh, wait a minute, I don't have backfill. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna build a relationship from backfill over to masonry. So I'm gonna click, hold, and pull it over here to masonry and let go. And now if I go to, uh, oh, not a masonry. If I go back to masonry, predecessors i now have three i've order deliver brick backfill frame and shingle roof okay is that going to change my schedule i don't know let's check i'm gonna hit the clock i'm gonna hit schedule bam no no change okay um so um that's one of the areas i want to check the other one i want to check is the punch list okay so i'm going to come down here and click on the punch or punch out and i'm going to hit predecessors well i got form and pour driveway exterior trim and interior finish I almost think before I, I saw four activities. Let's go back to the drawing. Go back to the drawing. Here's the punch. I have exterior trim coming into it. I have form and pour driveway. I have masonry, and now I have interior finish. So exterior trim, form and pour, masonry, interior finish. Form and pour, exterior trim, interior finish. I am missing the masonry. So I'm gonna come over here to my schedule. I'm gonna slide this back here just a little bit so you can see it better. Come over to my schedule, I'm gonna click on the end of masonry and I'm gonna bring it down to the punch. Okay, so there's that relationship. Did it build it for me? Click on and click back, click on punch out. And look, I have four now, okay? All finish to start. I'm gonna hit the clock, see if that makes any difference. No, no difference. Okay, so now the only other thing I bet is a problem is the start to start relationship. So if I look at my drawing again, I've got a start to start coming out of masonry into exterior trim. And it's a seven day lag, okay? So masonry to exterior trim. So let's look at that. I'm gonna go over here to masonry and I want to see what comes after masonry. So the successor. So I've got exterior trim and punch out. And coming out of the back of masonry, um, I have just the punch out, okay? So I don't have, it, the exterior trim doesn't come out of the back of it. Remember, it comes out of the front. So here, exterior trim relationship. I'm going to change that to a start-to-start -start relationship. 
and the lag is seven days. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter or click off on the white part of the screen here. And nothing has changed. Oh, yeah, that's right, because i got to schedule it, right? So I can click on schedule, click schedule again, and voila, now I have 41 days. And if I look, it changed this right here. It changed it coming out of masonry and into exterior trim. Now, let me put this back because I want to show you something else. Finish to start, zero. Okay, so now you can see it's come back over here. I'm going to just reschedule it just so I can put it back where it was. I'm back at 44 days. Okay, the other thing I can do, if I don't want to do it here under predecessor and successor, I can come up here and click on the actual uh, uh, activity. So if I put that little white up arrow on it, just that little skinny one, not that one, but that one. Uh, if I click on that activity, it should highlight it blue. Now, if you click on another one, like this one obviously goes to punch. That ain't the one. That's not the one, right? So I want to click on this one. And I'm going to right click on it and say activity details. Okay, so it's got to be highlighted. Right click on it, activity details. And it's going to pull this little box up. And right here in this box, I can delete the activity if I want to. So that's helpful because there are many times you're going to make a wrong relationship um, between two activities so sometimes you want to delete it but in this case I want to change the type because I can do it here too I'm going to click SS for start to start I'm going to put seven day lag on it and I'm going to hit OK and bam it changed it alright so I'm going to come up here to the clock hit schedule and it moved all this and I'm back to 41 so that's two different ways of changing the start to start relationship but uh, that is something crucial uh, especially going forward, you know, when you have bigger jobs and bigger projects and you have multiple start to start relationships, you want to make sure those are done right because you can see how that changed my days. So number one was the milestone. Number two, looking for missed relationships because your hand schedule is probably right if your math is right. So when you do your, your schedule schedule, keep your hand schedule with you. And, and just follow it and make sure, you know, click on these different ones and see what you got for a predecessor, successor, you know, making sure all these check in. So um, that's just, uh, that's pretty much all I've got right now. I just wanted to, to you know, emphasize some of this and, and kind of pull it out a little bit more and show you some of the tricks there of uh, the, um, uh, the scheduling thing. Oh, one more thing. Let me show you this. Uh, let's see. So I've got all these activities over on the far left. If I click on this square up here under activity ID in the gray, you'll see this little up arrow. Well, if I click on that, it's go it's going to change it to a down arrow. And now it re renumbers my uh, activity IDs from highest to lowest. So you can, you can do that, but that's obviously not what you want. So if you have a schedule that looks like this, and you're trying to figure out how to fix it. Just click that activity ID and it'll put it back in order. Now I could come over here and click on duration and I can arrange my schedule according to duration, either uh, ascending or descending, okay? Which makes that look really weird and why you'd wanna do that, I don't really know. But anyway, so just notice that that little arrow, it's really hard to see it, but that is what um, is what you wanna make sure it's in that activity ID and it's pointing up so that my numbers are are cascading down or actually getting higher as we go down, but it's cascading down on the schedule itself. So hopefully that kind of helps a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to point out a few of these things. Good luck with it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much. Have a great day.